Hello, I'm Atu Jamir and you're watching Hornbill TV's Prime at 9, now headlines. At least five persons died and as many as 538 huts and four houses have been completely damaged in Tamil Nadu due to incessant rains. The rescue operation is underway by Army, National Disaster Response Force, Tamil Nadu Fire and others. Environmentalists, political parties and people of Delhi have raised concerns over their failing situation as a thick layer of toxic form continues to float on the surface of the Yamuna River. Church devotees were seen standing in the toxic form laden Yamuna River near Delhi's Kalindi Kunj to offer prayers to the Sun God. Delhi's air quality marginally improved to very poor from severe category today as per Safari's analysis. An overall air quality index of 372 was reported in the national capital. Delhi Regional Security Dialogue, which is being convened by India over the Afghanistan situation, will be held in New Delhi tomorrow. There will be discussions over security situation in Afghanistan, radicalization, extremism, drug production and trafficking. In a convergence, as it was called, at the launch program of the 70-foot bridge called the People's Bridge, which was constructed in Longpang under the joint venture of Eulatrius Christian Society, the Hans Foundation, various government departments such as the PWT, PHED, RD, the AR, BRO, and especially the community of villages in and around the area, the Chief Minister of Nagaland, Nipurio, said that this type of initiative should be an eye-opener and implemented in all districts. Saying that the People's Bridge has been built to multiply the fruits of hard labor, the Chief Minister reiterated that this type of model should be taken to other areas and that the government will be supportive in this type of ventures. The program was held at Hotel Vivor in Kohima today. Let's have a look at the detailed report. The eastern districts of Nagaland bordering Myanmar are the most underdeveloped districts in the state, requiring urgent improvement in many areas. Health is a major challenge. They come under the most underdeveloped districts in Nagaland and are listed among the four high-priority districts in the state by NHM. The performance of the districts on critical health indicators are lowest in the state. In the year 2010, the then Principal Secretary of the Department of Health and Family Welfare, Menukul John, visited Longpang PHC, during which time ECS initiated a dialogue with the NHM, which now has become the only PHC in the entire country where doctors and nurses are appointed by the community and salary comes from the Department of Health and Family Welfare. To meet the basic health needs of the people, ECS started running the Longpang PHC on a public-private partnership model between the Department of Health and Family Welfare, the Government of Nagaland and the community. The 20-bedded PHC now provides round-the-clock services and is equipped with all the essential diagnostic facilities such as X-ray, ultrasound, ECG, CBC and biochemistry analyzers and a mother-child center with a fully functional labor room with its independent portable ultrasound machine and essential neonatal resuscitation equipment. One problem, however, has been access to health, particularly by remote villages to the PHC. In the year 2014, the villagers around the PHC met to discuss on-road linkage. For eight villages beyond the river, it took them almost three hours since there was no bridge and had to travel 30 kilometers upstream and 30 kilometers back to the PHC. The villagers felt only if they could raise funds to build a bridge. A bridge was then built over the Yejung River by the community using locally available resources. Unfortunately, the bridge got washed away by flood waters the following monsoon. Despite this huge loss, the community once again decided to go further downstream and rebuild the bridge at a safer location. The village councils and church took the lead for the building of the second bridge as well and SHG mothers and members of the Mothers Club came to support the initiative. ECS helped mobilize the support to build this bridge. 
Through a massive convergence effort between various state departments such as the Public Works Department, MGNREGA, the Border Roads Organization, DEF Twensung, Assam Rifles, the local MLA, PHED, and individual donors and friends of ECS, the construction was initiated. Other noteworthy funder was the Hans Foundation, who put in almost 60% of the cost. Young people came to help paint the bridge and many churches came to help in constructing wooden culverts on the link road. This convergence effort led to the building of a 10-kilometer link road and a 70-foot bridge that links the road and the bridge and this is the perfect example of how convergence of state, funders and the community can do wonders. Funders and contributors include the Hans Foundation with 47 lakhs, contribution by seven village councils with 6 lakhs, Department of RD with 8 lakhs and committed rupees 10 lakh, Department of RNB committed rupees 15 lakh and contributed 11 lakhs, ECS raised in all 10 lakhs, the local MLA with 15 lakhs, Digital Analog Bangalore with 2 lakhs, Brett and Gary in the USA 3 lakhs, Catherine and Michael Colby Charities with 1 lakh 15,000. Funders and contributors in kind included BRO with 100 bags of cement, Army with JCB for 10 days, DEF with 3 truckloads of sand, the PHED with 3 trucks for transporting girders from Dimapur till Bridge Point valued at 2,10,000. Churches provided food throughout the year for all workers on site and the CEO of ISB Infrastructure Private Limited Reduce bridge costs by almost 4 lakh as part of his contribution. I assure you, I will visit the place. And I have just seen the video clips. But I would like to come, see myself, and also talk to the community. And I want to thank them. This should be an eye-opener. And this should be implemented in all the districts wherever it is required. I will discuss with my colleagues and we will see how we can partnership the convergence of various departments with the trust or foundations who will also come forward. And then the community should take the responsibility, the ownership. Only then it is possible. You are aware, not only in Nagaland, but in the country also. The government undertakings, the PSUs, all felt economically not viable. And that's why during Vajpayee Prime Minister time, and even is going on very strongly, not investment to the PSUs, pub public undertakings, but it is this investment now. Everything, even lettuce is the Air India sold. There was no takers. But when they keep on pestering that somebody should take over, finally, Tata and sons took over because they had started that Air India. And that's why it has gone back to them, and we hope that our services will be much better now. So we have so much recognition about our tradition. We have uh, UN, uh, UN awards also for communitization. And we have recognitions even in customary law. And that's how even the country came forward about this method of fast track court. Our customary court doesn't take time, doesn't cost you, and keep people, uh, give justice, and keep people happy. The initiative 
taken, this model should be taken to other areas as I expected. And my government will be supportive in this joint venture. Unless the stakeholders take the ownership. There are so many schools, buildings done, but it is not run properly. I used to comment, the best school, uh, the best building in the village is the church building. The biggest, the best, and the worst building is the school building. So we have to see that our schools are made attractive for the students to spend time. And coming together bring changes. And therefore, we should multiply this concept. Uh, can you tell us more about this whole new concept of convergence that, uh, you know, the whole uh, function that we've been talking about with everyone and can you just tell us a little bit more if this is a new concept that should be taken very seriously? Yeah, actually, um, I think in a state like Nagaland where we are having resource constraints, uh, I think this is a beautiful way of, you know, different people with their own capabilities coming because here in this bridge what we saw was uh, you found that the engineers came and designed the bridge um, then uh, the CM Corpus Fund came and said okay we would like to you know put in resources then the local MLA came and said okay because if you look at that bridge it would have costed us around three four crores but the fact that the villagers came and they broke the stones and, you know, it made as though that the bridge was doable. I think that is uh, the beauty of it. But I think the most important thing is besides government bringing their expertise and their resources, I think it's also about communities owning the process and saying this is our bridge. I think that's more sustainable in the long run where people don't look at it as a government bridge or a government school building or, you know. So I think the challenge is how do we get people to own it? And I think the way forward for Nagaland is can we find this interface of you know, different uh, agencies and departments rather than doing things in isolation? Can they come together and forge alliances you know, within the different bodies? There is only so much communities can do with their legs and hands. And there are limitations to that. And so that is where getting the hardware was the challenge, you know. Um, so here, one of the challenge was also getting the people to understand that ultimately, look, this is for you. And because normally uh, local communities would say, is it our responsibility to build roads? Is it our responsibility to build bridge? Shouldn't the government build a bridge, you know? So for getting communities to come together, the church or villages to say, look, let's not wait for government to come. Let us do it on our own was, I think, one of the uh, major challenges. Yeah. Then, of course, getting uh, convincing people to come in, getting the departments to work together was definitely a challenge. But I also the beautiful thing that I saw in this experience was this time it was people making convergence happen. I think it was the other way around, where the people reach out to border roads, people reach out to PHED, people reach out to road and bridges. And so I think, and I'm beginning to wonder, was it easier for convergence because people asked them to come? And, and so these were some of the lessons that we learned in this project. So do you think uh, right now our government is ready for that as well, to, for departments to come together? And also, will it be a little more easier because we do have our bureaucrats that get transferred from one department to another, so they have a certain experience, certain knowledge of that department. So converging, would it be easier? I think, um, I think it's, uh, I, the, the whole thing is about perception and that whole mindset. Uh, because I think... Uh, if you look at the government structure, you have compartments and you don't work beyond your compartment. 
And I think we don't have a culture of doing things together. And so I think if we can break that barrier and perceive it in a different way that we're all actually here to do the same thing, uh, I think that's possible. But I mean, if you honestly ask me if the government is ready, I would say uh, it will take time. But I think the outcomes outweigh the challenges, you know, the positive outcomes outweigh the challenges. So uh, it just needs one or two good people within different agencies or departments or in the community to break that um, glass ceiling and say, look, let's think out of the box and come. This is what we ought to be doing. I think it's easy if we do it together. Uh, so that kind of an idea, if it comes and seeps into the psyche of our leaders. Uh, finally, of course, it definitely needs political will. The government has to say that, I mean, doing things together, convergence has to become our culture of doing things. Now, how do we do that? It's only when the chief minister himself says, this is the way it's going to happen, so we have to work together and think... I think it's possible uh, for a small state like Nagaland. Uh, with these few projects that uh, you are also here for, uh, what is the biggest challenge you have uh, faced in Nagaland as a state? Communication, Communication. the road network. That, uh, uh, that makes it difficult, you know. Like I'll give you an example. Recently we conducted a survey in uh, Pasau. Pasau is a village in Mon. It is one of the easternmost villages very close to Myanmar. Uh, and I had, we had a team of uh, professional surveyors, including a doctor and few ladies who came uh, for a survey before we set up our medical project there. So uh, for them to reach Pasau became a challenge, you know. They had to midway change a vehicle and then go across the, uh, the difficult place which the vehicle could not uh, cover. So that's a And then to do the survey which was planned over a week, it took 10 days. Because the traveling was... So that, that road network is a challenge, indeed. And so uh, how many people, in, you know, according to your survey, is going to benefit from this uh, People's Bridge? Oh, People's Bridge is like 8,700-odd households. So you can imagine 30 to 40,000 people who will actually get connectivity. So this is going to be like, uh, uh, I think, a major uh, help. To the locals. The People Bridge will benefit many nearby villages where around 8,700 households and around a population of 35 to 40 thousands are going to be benefited. Nagaland government is trying hard to develop Nagaland in the areas of communication and connectivity. Your all demand of the people have been fulfilled by integration of People's Bridge. Delhi Regional Security Dialogue, which is being convened by India over the Afghanistan situation, will be held in New Delhi tomorrow. The dialogue will be held at the level of National Security Advisors of Secretaries of Security Councils and will be chaired by India's National Security Advisor Ajit Doval. The dialogue will witness participation of Iran, Kazakhstan, Greeks, Republic, Russia, Tajikistan, Turkmenistan and Uzbekistan. India had also invited Pakistan and China for the meeting. However, both countries are not participating. China has said it is unable to attend the meeting due to scheduling issue but is open for dialogue with India on Afghanistan multilaterally and bilaterally. The high-level dialogue will review the security situation in the region arising from recent developments in Afghanistan. It will deliberate upon measures to address the relevant security challenges and support the people of Afghanistan in promoting peace, security and stability. The Perrin District Legal Services Authority observed Legal Services Day and conducted a mini-camp at Perrin Town with highlights about various schemes and services that are available for the public. The District Legal Services Authority Social Welfare Development Department, Saki One Stop Centre of Perrin District, Child Labour Protection Unit and the Ayushman Bharat team from the Medical Department participated in the camp and highlighted schemes and services available for the awareness of the public.
Manipur State PJP President A. Sharda has said that she, being a woman, will demand 33% seats for women in the upcoming elections, which is scheduled to be conducted in the early part of 2022. She was speaking at the party's headquarters at K. Sampat Chuthek in Imphal West. Commenting on the issue related to two Congress party MLAs joining the PJP in Delhi, Sharda said it is a landslide kind of situation in the political scenario of the country and everyone wants to join the party, which is not surprising, she claimed. When asked about reports in the media about more MLAs from other parties joining, she said whoever wants to join the party should do so before the end of November because, according to Sharda, by the end of this month, the party will put a ceiling over it. When Hornbill TV acquired about three or four individuals running after the party's ticket in every constituency, Sharda said, the party will decide after looking at the potential of the winning of each candidate. Initiated by the Sumi Hoho, a first-of-its-kind citizens' good road campaign started on November 9 in connection to which a flag-off ceremony was conducted at the Zumti village junction. Delivering the keynote address, the president of the Sumi Hoho, Nikheto Jimomi, said that the Sumi Hoho wanted to set an example for the Sumi community that by contributing with what little they have, it can be transformed into a big project and with the confidence they have for the community, the project was initiated. He said that the response is encouraging and informed that the project will cover 60 kilometers. It is informed that another group led by some of its members has started the work from Kandinya Kashito Yaptomi, president of the Sumi Kukami Hoho, lauded the president of the Sumi Hoho and his colleagues for taking such a challenging project. He said that the Kandinya Road isn't just for the Sumi people but for all. He urged every individual to come forward and join hands in this project. He also lauded Peter Lichamo, the Deputy Commissioner of Zuniboto, for always being supportive of the Sumi community. Uh, we are uh, very happy to announce that we are getting a very, we are getting very good responses from the uh, Sumi uh, populace. The charges, they are not only paying for us, but they are also donating uh, so much. The local charges and the associations, they are donating. And we are also very thankful to our executive secretary of both uh, Intermont and uh, Isotho for appealing to the local charges to uh, participate in this uh, uh, campaign. Uh, we are also thankful to each and everyone, as our president has mentioned, it is very encouraging to see one young student, young high school student, donating 1,000 rupees from Kohima. While flagging of the initiative, Peter Litamo congratulated and lauded the Sumi Hoho for the initiative and spoke of how this was a new thing for him and others also. He said Zeniboto was a land of roads but are not able to maintain them. Adding that the initiative will go a long way, he drew parallels from a Bible story where a lady offered to copper coins and Jesus being very much satisfied said that the lady had given the whole thing. The official further hoped that not only the Sumis but other Naga tribes too will emulate this example. This project to be a success. And the people, not only Sumis, but I think the other tribes will also emulate our examples. Sometimes we cannot always depend on government alone. We have to do it by ourselves. Therefore, this is the step that we have taken that we are doing something for the welfare of the people. This is a big challenge to the departments. This is a big challenge to the government. This is a big challenge to the people. Chief Minister N. Biren Singh has launched on November 9 what is called the face-to-face -face classes under the Chief Minister's Civil Services Coaching Scheme for 2021 to 2022 at the State Academy of Training, Takiepat. The launch was organized by the Department of Higher Education, Government of Manipur, State Academy of Training and ALS Satellite Private Limited. Speaking at the occasion, Biren Singh said that as the state has witnessed significant improvement in COVID-19 situation, normal classes in schools and colleges for class 10 and above would commence soon. He however said that opening of the schools for junior classes would delay for some more time as there is 
a need for further assessment. The Chief Minister stated that the commencement of physical civil service coaching would enable hundreds of aspirants to have the same coaching as in Delhi or other cities here. Now, they need not travel to other cities, spending a huge amount of money as the coaching is available in the state free. Of course, under this initiative of the state government, he pointed out. Stating that it had been long cherished dream of his to introduce quality civil service coaching for students of the state for free, Burian Singh expressed his appreciation to ALS, IAS Academy and the officials for making it possible. That's all we have for now. Keep watching Hornbill TV.